Okay. Good morning, everybody. Today we're going to go over the February release uh, releases for all the applications. But first, I want to mention that a few weeks ago we did a W two and ten ninety nine correction Fridays with fiscal due to some ten ninety nine changes in the software on the hot fix coming early next week or sometime next week. This made that piece re just regarding the 1099s to be no longer relevant. So what we did <clears throat> on the YouTube page under the meetings and recordings, we removed that section of the 1099 part. So if you go to review this video, it's gonna be only the um, W2 corrections. However, we we will do a session on March 8th and redo the whole thing. So all the changes will be reviewed on Mar March 8th and it's out here to register. So I wanted to mention that. Any questions on that? Okay. So Down at the bottom of the meetings and trainings page, you'll find the 2024 link for the recaps. And I'm going to start with the USAS February re uh, releases, we where we had two regular releases and two hot fixes. One of the improvements included a rest controller for the building profiles. This is something that the users will see like in the software, it's like internal. Another improvement that we made improved the external authentication process. So now when it's configured, the external user must only log in using the external provider. We also made improvements to the report link, allowing the multi-factor authentication users to use the report link securely. So now these, I'm gonna shorten that word, multi-factor authentication to MFA. So these MFA users will now be required to create a token in the system, a personal access token on their user account. So I'm in a demo account. And if I go under utilities and show profile, you see this generate token. So when you click on it, it's going to give you that pop-up that says it's a warning that it'll replace any other tokens that were created before. But it also warns you that um, any reports that were previously created will need to be regenerated with this link. Because what this link does, once you click the generate, it it puts that authentication basically behind the URL. So when you do do, when you are processing a report link like to Excel and you get your data, oops, sorry, and you're gonna post that URL, that's gonna be, a, it'll be authenticated for the user already. Any questions on that? So when the user accesses like the Excel right here and they post the URL, it'll be um, validated for the user and it'll be refreshed. However, upon fixing that, for, for MFA users, there was a bug that broke the basic authentication that's used by strategic solutions. So that was corrected and really released on that first hot fix of February. However, I think we did relocate an issue after a release. And we do have a JIRA issue for those users that are non-multi-factor authentication. They right now need to do that same process and generate that personal access token and regenerate the report link. But if you have any issues, please put in a support ticket regarding that. All right. 
So last month during the January USAS recap, a new feature to unvoid avoided disbursement was discussed. However, after a question came up during the meeting, we discovered that a dis the disbursement was being unvoided correctly, but it was it allowed the disbursement was allowed to be unvoided even when it was already voided and replaced, like reinvoiced and paid on another check. So that caused the PO to be overpaid. And then that was the second hot fix correction in February. And that was just, I believe, last this past Wednesday, two days ago. So now that will not allow um, it to be paid after it's been voided. So in the prior, when you went to void, you had this screen, you will no longer see that screen. That's been replaced with this. Are you sure you wanna unvoid the selected disbursements? If it works and you'll get, the user will get a message to confirm that it was unvoided but you could get an error message due to the items on the voided check being paid on another disbursement. And I put the error here, but let me go into the system and I'll show you, it might be bigger if I go into the system. So I'm gonna try to, where's my check mark? Okay, so this check is outstanding, but I'm gonna void it. I'm gonna uncheck this so that the invoices go back to the payables. So if I pay this now, I will no longer be able to um, unvoid that check because it's already been paid. And I'll go back to that. Oops. So this is the voided check. When I unvoid it, it'll throw me, uh, it'll give me that pop-up message. And it'll either give me a confirmation, but we expected this error that says unvoiding this failed because of the previous, um, because the items were paid on a previous disbursement. Any questions on that? We also added the ability to um, clone report bundles. So, sorry, got distracted for a minute. Any report bundle that a user can see is eligible to be cloned. Um, but when you clone it, I'm gonna clone this board bundle. You have to change the report bundle name or it won't be saved or as a clone. So it's gotta be like a report bundle, Pat and that'll be saved. The role that is needed to see report bundles created by other users is admin underlying reports. I believe I put that on that recap page. Yep. Um, by default, the admin user and the USAS manager roles contain that permission. But if you have another user who doesn't have admin or USAS manager privileges, then you would need to add that permission in order to see others, other reports in order to clone. Any questions on that? And then we implemented a requisition approval report that shows all the requisitions currently in the workflow process. So, Again, I'll go into the system. You can find it under the report 
canned reports is the very last one. The report is going to show the requisition number, username, the action, which the actions can be chosen here. You can use the arrow or you can like, what do you call that? Drag and move it over. So, and you can also save your report, save and recall. So I have one set up for approved, rejected, and recalled. So those requisitions that have been rejected and recalled in the past, for instance, but are now approved, when I generate this, it'll give me that report. Now you can still find that same audit trail on the requisition. So you can see here, um, this, this requisition was recalled for no reason specified. This one was a wrong account code. But if we go back and look at that requisition, I'll show you, besides that report, it's just pulling from the actual requisition approval audit trail. So now it's on a report. And that works with the USAS requisition approval workflow. Um, so any questions on that? Did I show you that report? I did, but I was gonna show you another one that's where, so you could do, I mean, you can specify it by user. You can start requisition number. So it's very customizable. So any questions on that before I turn it over for the USPS updates? I got a yay for the team for cloning report bundles. That is a big, big advantage. All right, I'll stop sh sharing and USAS will, or USPS will be next. I'm not sure if it's Andrea or Lori that's up next. It's 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 Andrea. Pat, give me one second. I'll see if something's going on here. Um, can you still see my screen? No, I don't see your, oh, yep, now I do. I can move on to inventory if that's okay. That'd be perfect, thank you. Okay, now on this recap page for inventory, it does say that there were no February releases in the inventory application, but honestly, I'm not sure how I missed this last month, but we did have a recap an inventory that I don't believe I reviewed last month. So I'm gonna review it now. Sorry, and I apologize for that. It was released like at the very end of January. So that release included book value report updates and I can show you the, let me go into the instance and, oops, not you, Sass. and show you the up, the improvements that was made in January. So if you go to the book value report, we did add, when you sort by the amount selection, when you sort by last year of useful life, useful life you get these pop up beginning and end. Same with 
um, percent of depreciation, beginning percent, ending. And then the remaining life has a beginning and ending date added. When you do all as it defaults, it has no, no date parameters there. And then the other one, I believe it was the location. I'm sorry, I'm back on February. Yeah, the location code sorting option was corrected. Um, so now it's going to sort by category first and then by number. So I apologize again for missing that if I'm a January release, but that was the update for inventory. And then if USPS is ready. Hey, Pat. Yes. Quick question before we switch over to USPS. Do you know if Matt had recorded the uh, demo he did last week of the new employee service portal that's coming? And if he did, where do you know if that's located somewhere? Oh, I don't know. But I can maybe answer that. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I can answer that. Good morning. <laughs> Um, yes, um, the recording is, is, uh, ready to go. I'm just, um, waiting on Matt to see where he wants that to be posted. I'm not sure if we're going to put it in the wiki somewhere or on a registration page. So, um, once we do, I'll probably just send out a, an email message to you guys to let you know. Great. Thanks, Michelle. I thought I'd just slip that in there while you get between your transition quick. No problem. Thank you. Um, is, I don't see where Andrea's been. She says she's on the wait in, uh, waiting room, but I don't see her. And I have her try it again. Let me double check again here. Okay, there we go. Oh gosh, I'm so sorry. I was working on training for next week and I lost track of time. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, let me share my screen. And... Okay. Let me get that to where I need to be. Okay. All right. Um, We'll be going over the USPS releases um, for February. Um, the first ones will be um, the bug fixes, which I'm going to go through the blue one and the red ones um, down here at in improvements because those were um, improvements and then they had uh, bug fixes that were not right. Um, the first one was the employee onboarding. Um, the time, the set time zone, um, when the district was adding in an employee, they realized that uh, the dates were changing once they did the complete task and looked at the compensation for the dates. It's stating that uh, they entered a 2-1 on the employee dash onboarding, but when they did the complete task, it was causing it to go to the day before. And then we noticed that was on some other dates also. So they went ahead and fixed that. Um, the direct deposit, the year-to-date total, not including error adjustments. Uh, note that um, the direct deposits were not showing the year-to-date error adjustments. They would show what the error adjustments they had for that two-week pay period, but they was not adding it to the year-to-date on that um, direct deposit. So they fixed that bug. Um, also, just a reminder, 
Um, they can't go back to any of the payments prior to this release and to get that to show. It's only from this um, release and on when they start running new payrolls. Um, now we'll be going down to improvements. Um, the improvements were um, the payroll. The first one was the future pay amounts. We did an improvement with that and when they did that, they introduced a bug because um, now when they're entering payments in future, um, if on the compensation record, what it will look for is the label first to enter the description in future. If that is blank, then it will go to the compensation de um, description if that's not blank. So what happened then when they introduced the bug at that time um, if a district went in and went to label in the compensation, removed it, and then saved it and went back to future and tried to add it, it was not um, bringing anything in at that time. So they went ahead and fixed that bug. Um, the next one is the... Um, happened to my screen. Um, I don't know what happened to it. There it is. Sorry about that. Lost it. Um, next thing on the salary notice, they add the option to process a pay group. So now if you go to salary notices, And then to salary notices here, they have the option now to select a pay group to um, select only those employees in that pay group to run that salary notice. Um, before they didn't have that option and they had to run it by specific employee or um, all employees. So now they have that option. The next thing would be the, let's see leave balance report. Um, this is something new that was also added that was requested by many of the districts. Now they can run this report as of date. So now it'll run, they can run it um, every month, they can run it every payroll, um, and they can show what their balance was before that payroll and what was after if they, um, if they wanna run it um, for that time frame. So they can do that. Um, so that I think that would be something very useful for districts to use. Um, the next improvement we made was the payroll payments view improvements. And that was under uh, pay, payroll um, when you're processing payments and also under payroll uh, payments payroll. Um, all we did here is when, excuse me, um, under payments and also under the employee dashboard. If you click on this, highlight it, you will see the start and stop dates are here now for each of the um, direct deposit or every payment that was for an employee. So that I think is gonna be useful for districts to go in and they can check that. Um, same goes for the employee dashboard um, under payments. And if you click on one, again, you're gonna see the start and stop dates in here too. So there are all, so that's something that was added. Um, the next thing, um, this was, this goes with this blue one up here for the bug fix. We did an improvement um, for um, the configuration when they make the default form selected under the payment configuration. So when they're in the configuration and now they go to the payment printing and now they can do um, direct deposit form. So now they can um, enter which one they want to set as default. And then that one will show when they're processing payments during the payroll, or if they need to reprint one, um, they can go in, select that employee, 
And now that automatically come up and stay there because that's my default one. And it was when we introduced that improvement, we um, had a bug that came through that when they were trying to go ahead and print some or reprint something, it was throwing an error at them. So they went ahead and fixed that. The next thing was they added the new warning. Now when they're running payroll on the payroll error report, if they forgot to enter a retirement code on the position for that employee, they're going to get a warning now on that error report. Um, again, they have to look at that because it still will process the payroll without that, and they may not catch it until after way after payroll or the next time they run payroll. So again, they really want to look at that warning, um, that warning um, error report, and, and make sure that they don't have any employees that don't have a SERS or STRS record um, entered that should be. Um, the compensation print screen. Um, there was a bug where when they were printing that print screen for the compensation, maybe they keep that for each employee's records and files. Um, it was not including any custom fields. So if districts had custom fields created, um, they would um, not be printing. Those would not print for some reason on that report. It was excluding them. So that has been fixed. Um, the accumulations view improvement. Uh, now, when they go to accumulations under leaves, and go here. So now when they create one, they have that new option to close right away, or if they have 10 employees that they have to add or 10 um, separate um, lines they need to add, now they can just continue going on and they don't have to click out and then create and click out. So I think that's going to be very useful. The And the next thing is the position selected filtered. Um, they now, when you go in and select an employee, so I'll use my Brent Hurst as my um, example. If you go to the employee and you want to say, well, I need to add a vacation accrual for this employee. This employee has four different um, positions that have eligibility for different leave for personal. One has vacation, may, one may have um, sick. So now when you select that, vacation, it's only going to show actually the positions that are eligible. So for vacation, I only have um, his position two and, and teacher four, um, position four eligible for this leave. Um, again, goes for like if I had sick and I select this employee, his only I only have him set for four, his position four is eligible for leave. So now you can't add leave for the long wrong position. As long as you have them set up correctly in the beginning, it will only pull in those leaves that are eligible for um, like personal. I only have him set for position one and position four. So that is a new option that they added. Sorry, my cat wants to come up. All right. Sorry. Okay, on. Um, adjustment journal. Um, this is a new improvement that will, I'll show you how to go over. And we'll go over this. So what they did was kind of um, did it differently. So now when you go in to add an adjustment for an employee, um, you can select your employee. Now, if you're selecting, you need to adjust just like retirement, ODGF's weeks, um, SERS hours, things like that. Don't select a payroll item. That will be left blank. So then you select your type. And now what it does in alphabetical order shows just those um, types that you can adjust. So now you don't have those other fields sitting in there and you have that whole list and you have to search for them. So I think this is a nice a nice way for the searching and you won't get confused on um, 
and where they're at in the list because before they were all over the place. So then if you wanna select something for W-2 time, federal tax, 001. Now we have them in alphabetical order and they also have these different options to type if you need to add for uh, at different times. But you also have the amount withheld, total gross and applicable gross for a federal if you need to adjust those. So then if you go to any other normal um, payroll item, then you will see they are only showing what fields can be adjusted. There is no more than these five. Same thing goes for if I select a retirement record. You have the normal ones, board's amount of payroll item, and then you also have the fiscal year to date. Um, if they have to adjust that for um, advance time or something, rehire, retiree, um, they have those listed under here. So those go with the 400. So if you go down to maybe the 590, those show just the four that are used um, just for the 590. And then one more, I'll just show you the 692. And those show which ones um, can be adjusted um, for your Medicare records. So you're gonna definitely have your board's amount of payroll item or the board's pickup. So I think that will save some time. And again, they're all in alphabetical, um, alphabetical order. So I think that will be very helpful. Um, when they're trying to do adjustments. Okay. Um, okay. Um, the last one we had on the improvement was just the uh, external uh, on authentication changes. Um, and what they did was just made it where local users can no longer um, attempt to use the authentication to external providers. <clears throat> behind the scenes. So <clears throat> um, the next one was they improved the performance of the CRDC report. Um, we were having districts trying to run it for like fiscal year 22, 2022, and they were, it was not completing um, or taking a very long time. So they did improve that performance. And as far as we know, that has been corrected. Um, we haven't heard anything that they, it wasn't working um, now at this time. And then the next thing was the eternal, um, they had some behind the scenes, um, maternal arrest API improvements. Um, but again, those were behind the scenes. Um, is there any questions on the releases for um, February? Okay. Um, if there isn't any other questions, I'll, I'll let it over to Um, Michelle. I think, I think Andrea, we're, we're good. Um, Pat covered the inventory uh, information already. So I think we're, we're all set for the, for the day. Um, okay. Um, everyone, thank you for attending. Um, like I said, once I hear from Matt in regards to that ESS video recording that he did on the 21st, I will let everybody know. So um, we appreciate and you guys have a good weekend. Thank you. Have a good day.